Thank you all for being here today at, at, at this conference. Your, your pursuit of new production methods and technologies are a uh, very essential part of the effort that's going on uh, to attain energy independence, uh, keep Texas competitive in that global marketplace. Among the major issues facing our country today is the rising cost of energy, our dependence upon foreign uh, oil. Uh, those two just complicate the, uh, the challenges that are posed by the struggles in our uh, nation's financial sector, uh, as if uh, you know, huge government bailouts aren't enough to cause us some great concern. Uh, the rising energy costs are, are causing our citizens uh, to pay more for life's uh, necessities, putting gasoline in their cars, running the, uh, the thermostat to keep a home cool in, in Texas uh, in August is a, is a pretty good uh, drain on your resources. Um, America's national security, economic stability are seriously threatened when uh, we rely upon other nations for 70 percent of our oil supply as a matter of foreign and economic policy. Our nation must reduce its reliance, its dependence upon this foreign oil by building a deeper, more diverse uh, energy portfolio. And I happen to think that effort starts right here in, in, the, in the state of Texas. Um, Texas needs to lead the charge in energy independence, partly because we're better at producing energy than anyone else in the United States. Uh, I'm proud to say that Texas leads the nation in crude oil production. Texas refineries account for more than a quarter of all the country's uh, refining capacity. Texas refineries feed a network of pipelines uh, that radiate outward from our state uh, and virtually every major consumption area east of the Rocky Mountains is, is touched by uh, that pipeline network. We also lead the nation in, in natural gas production, uh, contributing nearly uh, one-third of the nation's supply. Uh, that's gas that ends up in homes and businesses and factories and uh, California to New England, everywhere else in between. Um, and uh, I, if, if my friend Boone Pickens has anything to do with it, we'll be using it in a lot more uh, places as well. Uh, transportation needs from the standpoint of the conversion from gasoline over to um, CNG, which I am um, supportive of. Texas also um, has led the charge in the development of new production, uh, pioneering technologies, and extract natural gas from shell formations. I mean, just If you hadn't flown over the state of Texas in, uh, say, three years, and you got back in an aircraft and flew, it would be stunning for you to see what is happening uh, through central Texas, and particularly if you were coming into Fort Worth uh, and, and through uh, that uh, Ennis and uh, Ellis County part and, and back through Tarrant County. I mean, just the, the extraordinary exploration and the horizontal drilling that's going on and the new technologies. Um, not only do we produce more natural gas, but we store more of that natural gas than uh, anyone else, which is very helpful because we are major consumers of it. And, and uh, uh, in, in, in this state. More than 60 percent of our state's natural, excuse me, electrical production comes from natural gas, which means our electricity uh, can be held captive by the pricing fluctuations uh, of, of just one commodity. And I think we need to take a long look at the, the Texas law uh, that requires 50 percent of all new generating capacity utilize natural gas. Uh, government shouldn't be in the business of picking uh, winners and losers, and that's precisely what that law does. Uh, this is also why we need to continue pressing uh, for more diverse energy sources. Uh, fortunately, Texas is, is making progress uh, in all of those issues that I I've, that I've mentioned here. Um, I know Barry has been involved with uh, a, 
a number of those, if not all of those, and, and uh, I want to say thank you for your service, and I think the PUC is doing a, uh, a fabulous job of, of helping us diversify and, and uh, uh, give us some, some options to the, the energy portfolio that will pay great dividends in, in the future. Uh, one example of that is on the, the wind energy side. Installed wind energy capacity, we lead the nation, and uh, it's it not, it not even close for second place. Uh, uh, but we still need to overcome some transmission bottlenecks out in uh, West Texas, and, or I should say between West Texas and the rest of, of the state. Uh, and, and fortunately, that's exactly what the PUC has done. We've chosen a plan uh, that will fund the build out of, of that infrastructure. And we're also making big strides in solar energy, uh, both in terms of possible large scale generation facilities and, uh, and in the semiconductor companies that are pioneering some new products from their existing production facilities. Right here in Texas, that uh, innovation is occurring. Um, but with that said, the sun goes down every day in Texas, and the wind quits blowing from time to time. And Texas companies are making some strong headway uh, into storing that energy, but we need to continue pressing forward uh, with other sources, like nuclear, like clean coal technology. Right now, there are four proposed nuclear sites, more than any other state. Those represent some 9,000 megawatts of electricity making their way through the permitting process as we speak. On the clean coal side, our state is already the leader in CO2 uh, sequestration expertise. We've, Dennis, as you know, developed that over the years in our um, oil recovery, uh, enhanced oil recovery that we've, we've been working with in Texas for years. Um, you were very involved. Michael Williams was very involved with our effort to uh, uh, bring the future gen site here to Texas. And, and uh, unfortunately, our friends in Washington, D.C. pulled the plug on that project. Excuse the pun. But uh, it, it was a, a very frustrating and I think disappointing uh, move to lose that momentum. Um, Texas has this very substantial uh, supply of lignite coal in our backyard, and I have every reason to believe that Texas will uh, end up as a leader in, in the area of, of clean coal, clean coal technologies. Um, and I think we need to keep forging forward, pressing forward uh, with that and other clean energy technologies because the, the threat of, of CO2-related federal legislation uh, I think it looms bigger and more ominous every day as our representatives in Washington, D.C. debate such regulations. They need to remember that the size of our energy industry will cause new regulations to have a disproportionate impact on our state. Um, other states that lack an energy uh, industry anymore are more than happy to discuss new energy taxes or cap and trade arrangements. But we oppose them because they would decimate our economy. Uh, let's face it, we fuel the nation. Products drawn from underneath Texas soil, refined by hardworking Texans, a lot of your constituents are distributed all across the nation to power homes and cars and businesses and more. If the federal government prematurely passes legislation regulating, regulating carbon without considering the impact on our state, they best include provisions that allow Texas to pass increased cost on to those states that rely upon us for energy, goods, services. Otherwise, their unwise policies could cripple a vital Texas industry and cause a ripple effect all through the country that could hamstring not just our state, but I happen to think this entire nation's economy. 